Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Uh, this is the beginning of the year. I haven't done one since the beginning of the year. Uh, so I'm going to give us a short recap of what where we are right now. We're still in a situation where the idea is still a, the plan for world peace is still an idea. We have basically introduced the planning for the first eight government proposals and it's out there open for debate. It's a viable alternative to to war, for example. Um, so, um, I, I think I mentioned in a previous video um, that I had sent the letter to the Supreme Court to, to the ambassadors in November and that would, it, with the hopes that they would come together and see the potential of the plan for world peace uh, as a viable alternative to war. So I don't know what the status is on it. I'm probably the last person to ever know what's going on. But I do know what's going on from the perspective of of where we stand on a by just reading the the news okay keeping track of what's going on in the world okay and that's where we are today and I wanted to the reason I'm doing this video is because in previous videos I talked about the four the four segments of the population and I talked about how backing people into the corner you have to turn around okay so that's where we are right now with the republican party it, this applies to everyone and why people would join what would motivate people to join the plan for the international government is it because there's a war going on um probably not necessarily and the reason for it is it depends on um uh, Vladimir Putin could do that could join because he's if he's backed himself into the corner um, that's where where we are is it's it, let's say if you back yourself into the corner um, then you have to turn around and go through the little door that's back there rather than you can't you can't you can't you have two untenable positions and and neither of them you don't want you don't want to fight and you can't let's say North Korea didn't want to couldn't fight um, a nuclear war and they couldn't starve and so they he Kim Jong-un turned around and went through the door you could say to support it and then Donald Trump basically pulled him backwards into there thinking that that it was going to solve the problem so now North Korea and South Korea have opened up discussions on it and now it's just waiting for other people to participate in it and to join, which is okay because their their proposal was the last government proposal for the first eight. That's that's okay. They know it, and now what they're doing is they're they're going to be turning around and looking at at the the um, uh, Asian continent, which is okay because eventually the continents will all because they have a common history and that and that goes back thousands and thousands of years they have a common history those cultures there and they're working on issues within their own con their own continent so the international government will be divided up into the continents and that'll solve a lot of problems like what to do about Israel because Israel might decide to go with the United States and they might decide to it's like caucusing, you know, they might decide to, um, like an independent nation deciding to work with, not in the Middle East, but in with the United States or with Europe. They might consider themselves to be more European. So there'll be a time when there's a, a, a change. So right now what we have is an idea and people are just kind of trying to figure out where they fit into the whole idea. So it's, it, the, it's still there. But what I wanted to talk today about was the Republican Party. Uh, and I'd like to go back to the, the, the pre-Constitution days when, when they were for fighting a war, the war, and the, the, like the Stamp Act time period, and then after that when they started to realize that there was this conflict coming, and they, some people didn't want it. Some people didn't think independence was a good idea. They were loyal. It was dividing this country. The 
the colonies and the people who lived here into this four segments again. It was that the movement had started. The American Revolution movement had started, and that's where we are now, is the world peace movement has started. So we can look at other movements like the American Revolution movement because we're just another step of that, just like what happened at Stonehenge. Um, we are, as a world, we're looking at Stonehenge and how that ended because of the of the conflict. They couldn't figure out how to end genocides. So now we're at the point of ending genocides. So we're taking this, a, a, a structure that's viable, and we're taking it to the next level. Okay, which can help China, for example, because if they go and they create the the Silk Road Initiative by working on an international level, by taking over resources in Africa and South America, by by taking it over and controlling that everything like they did with the Silk Road. Uh, basically, it won't work. The only way it will work is to create that continental basis where they're, they're working like in a competition with, with the United States, the North American, and the South American and Europe and Asia, okay? So where, where, where we are now is there's this big dance going on with the idea. Are, they, are people going to go, nobody's going to go with Russia being the emperor of the planet? Putin being the emperor of the planet or, Putin, or Xi Jinping or President Sali because they're all jockeying for power. And as they do, they don't understand the root cause of the problems and they're, they're um, losing power because of it. They're backing themselves into the corner. Okay, so what happens is they turn around, but <clears throat> the idea of turning around is this. So let's look at the Republican Party right now. What, what is going to happen right now? I, the Republican Party is in a situation where Donald Trump has gone down to the point where most of his, to 25% of the population. At first he had the Republicans and the, the, the people who functioned for their own interests working together. But the people, the independents, the people who function for their own lives, that focus on their own lives, when that's affected, they don't really necessarily come into the politics. The Democrats, the Republicans, the people pretty much stay home and they only get involved when, you know, when somebody knocks on their door and says, come on and vote, okay? Or the people here, so we had, we had these people here, the first, we had the Democrats working with the people whose lives are affected, and they, that's why they come out and they say, well, we have to work with, deal with social security we have we're going to protect social security we're going to protect this we're going to do this we're going to do this so they have this these two people this two groups of people the democrats who stand on the principles the republicans who go down into the power games whenever these guys stand on the principles who people whose lives are affected and then the people who function for their own interests and i've talked about this before but what's happening now is that each of the groups is kind of splintering too, and it's schisming, and it eventually will get down to the individual level where that's when you vote for, for the plan for the international government. Okay, but there's the Republican Party has been trying to, it's kind of like backing itself into the corner because they, let's say if Donald Trump runs in 2026, 2024, if he, if he, they're, they, they they have to figure out how to beat the Democrats, but they also have to figure out what to do about Donald Trump and what happens, how what to do with that twenty five percent of the population. Okay, so is the are the Democrats going to win? So they're trying to get as many people in there. And this morning, Mitt Romney said, you know, if you can't win, don't don't take don't take anything away. We need to have it down to just like two people. But the question is, who are those two people? Is Donald Trump going to fight them? Is he going to undermine them? And the true, who is the person who can beat Donald Trump and the Democrats both in the, in the 2024? That's a dilemma that they have. And the reason for it is, is because they don't know where true power comes from. 
they, they're coming from a position of lack of power because they don't know how to do that. They don't understand the principles of where true power comes from. They are just, they focus on power, but they don't know where true power comes from. In a way, it's the same thing with, I'm going to use this for another example, in, and it's because of the faith of the pure ray about the religions. And if you look at the Chinese, they're focused on, on capacity. Their, their whole thing is capacity. And, but they don't under, to be honest, this is kind of weird, but they don't understand business very much. They don't understand the principles of business. The bi principles of business, ironically, were taught by Gautama Buddha. So by getting rid of religion, by getting rid of, by focusing on just the one without looking at the opposite side of the circle, um, you have capacity and opposing that is, is um, for business, is understanding about making win-win agreements. And that's why I brought up the idea of the Silk Road. If they don't address this issue, then what happens is they, they just demonstrate, they destroy themselves, they back themselves into the corner because they cannot oppress their way into taking resources. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the things that I've been doing over the last several months is I've been working on my business. I have a business and my business is a is a perfect business, so to speak. It's it's I'm a publisher and I I'm starting not only my my vo my avocation is world peace, my vocation is publishing books about world peace so they come together and they they help each other i can i can donate the money from my books to the organization and the organization needs what i publish so it makes a win-win agreement okay between these two sides and that's where everybody has to be having a vocation and avocation we'll go into that later though but i've been working on my my um by expanding a scalable, uh, um, like an open source um, website and how to take my raw materials all the way from my paper and my ink and take it all the way to being able to have a store and people walk out of the store at, with my book. So I have to have a... Um, I, I have a very large building, a very small idea, and a very large process that it takes to go through all these steps. So I've been working on this idea of coming up with a new, my new website and the idea of using like an open source uh, software that allow me to do it without spending huge amounts of money being very, very efficient. So if we are in the same situation, I have to be able to make win-win agreements in, within my business and my organization, and I have to be able to do that, but I need to also be able to make win-win agreements and allow people to get their life on a higher level. So I have a plan for world peace, but nobody really knows how to do it. So I'm teaching people here how to create the life they want that are unalienable rights. So it just gets to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So nobody can take this idea. So that's where we are with every country. Every country has its its things. We have the United States. We are predominantly, you could say, a Christian nation. But but we have to in, we have to be inclusive. We're a melting pot of all the countries, so we also have to include all seven of the major religions. If China, for example, doesn't, like I said, address the issue of win-win agreements, then basically they back themselves into the corner. They have to go all the way around uh, the planning circle and be inclusive for everybody, just like the United States. The The People, the Republicans are the I. I have 
I go to um, uh, our local street fair, and um, for many years there's been a um, a man who sells flags uh, within my the in, within the group, and they 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 are. Um, he he very predominantly shows the Gadsden flag, and that is the flag that is uh, that says um, that is the flag that says um, uh, it says in God. It, what is it? Don't tread on me. I was thinking in God we trust. Don't tread on me. But really, the flag that most closely that means I'm going to fight I'm going to fight I'm going to fight but the one that really closest is to the one that says join or die the flag that says join or die because that's where we are if you are backed into the corner with two untenable two you can't fight and because what will happen is you'll decimate yourself you cannot allow them to w tread on you but you also can't fight, so you're backed into the corner. The Republican Party has to turn around, and now the this elephant in the room idea of the plan for world peace, that is the solution for the Republican Party. Donald Trump is never going to go along with that because he doesn't recognize that. He's part of this last group of people. So what has to happen is somebody from the Republican Party who's not a Trumpian, who's never embraced Trumpism, has to stand up and understand the principles of what a Republican is. What is a Republican? Where does true power come from? So it'll be interesting to see over the next two years, okay, it's, it'll be less than two years now, who stands up and personifies the Republican Party, because at that point in time, if there's, let's say, Joe Biden, and who can beat Joe Biden? Is it somebody, and then it really doesn't matter. We, we step out of the idea of the, the rise of authoritarianism, and then we have a true Republican and a true Democrat, and it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter. And in the same thing, because if they're functioning based on the idea of focusing on power, and it's based on true power, who, who becomes president, the rest of us can just go on, on about our lives, and we can vote and not worry because there's no problem with who it is. The same thing with the Supreme Court. There's so much fear associated with the Supreme Court now, and, and you know, they're talking about how they lost their credibility and everything. But a Supreme Court justice that who stands on the law and is willing to, let's say, purify the, the, the laws and is willing to look at, at the root cause of the problem, but the intent of the law rather than the letter of the law, then it really doesn't matter who's on the Supreme Court. It, it, could, it could be all... And I'm going to be blasted for this, but it could be all nine white white men. It could be all nine black women or black men. It could be all, taking it to an extreme, it could be all anybody. It could be all a bunch of junior high school students. You know, it really doesn't matter who it is. Because if they're standing on the principles of the law, the intent of the law, it doesn't matter because they're not going to take away your unalienable rights. The rest of us can just go back and work on creating our, our avocation and our vocation. And we can concentrate on that. And we don't have to be dragged out of our homes uh, based on a fear-based idea. We can go into the idea of creativity. And that's where our country, the United States is the best because we are a nation where we have a melting pot of people but we also being a predominantly Christian country we can look at all the the ideas of creativity which is the principles that Jesus taught and then Moses taught the principles of productivity and which is what I'm looking at for how I'm going to produce a whole bunch of books 
over the next and figure out how to get my business started because it's so huge already. It's like my my vocate my avocation my project, my avocation is is so small right now and it's so big at the same time, and my business is so small and so big at the same time. It's the same idea. So we don't. I can just go back and do my job and just like everybody else it really won't matter and isn't that the pl place where we want to be isn't that the point where everybody's standing on the principles we have principles and power and project we have father mother and son now i'm not saying that that isn't a problem because you have we have the 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 person who pegs the father is the person who stands on the principles. The mother, we have God, is the the principles. I am that I am is the father figure. Lady Kai is the female. And that was wiped out a long time ago when everybody decided that God was a man. And a white man, okay? Okay, and then we have us, that we are the children of God. We are both, we are both creative and we are nurturing. So we can bring together, and I'm not going to say anything bad about any family, but let's say we have principles, power, and project, and if the child is being taught the principles and being taught the, taught being nurtured and taught the things that a father teaches and the things that a mother teaches, then, hey, I'm not against anything about, about gay people having, having children. You know, as long as they're learning the principles and the power idea of it, and it goes from there. That's that's what's important, okay? I'm not going to tell anybody how to live their life because, because I don't want anybody under universal law, nobody has the right to tell anybody how to live their life. And that's where we get into the Supreme Court again and everything else. So that's where, where I want to stop right now. Um, and I ask that you, you know that liking and sharing and subscribing is important. And most people, if you don't like my previous ones or you don't like the way I'm dressed, this is my shipping warehouse. This is where I, I'm setting this. Oh, I want to just say one more thing. Um, my business guide um, told me that people are kind of backwards if you're starting a small business. People are kind of backwards where it is, and I see a problem here. I'm gonna share a little bit of information with you first about businesses. I know nothing about business. I worked as a dental hygienist for years. I worked for somebody else, so I'm just learning business too. But my guide is a really interesting person, entity. Okay, and he told me people are backwards when it comes to starting businesses. He said, you set up your shipping department first. If you're starting a business, you go through another plan, come up with a plan, but you set up set up your shipping department first. And then you create your product. You get your product. And then you advertise. All right? So a lot of people will be well, we don't we advertise and we brought in 10 million. We sold 10 million, but we only have we we can't ship that many. Okay, so basically, we, do, we don't have the production, we don't have everything to go, so it's backwards. So you're going to have to start thinking kind of, don't back yourself into the corner based on the idea of starting a small business. That was just a little, little cherry on the top of what the, the dessert was for what I said today. And I consider this to be, be my dessert idea. Okay. So thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.